Hi everyone, my name is Ray Del Murrow. Eight minutes, I'm used to having an hour to do this. <laughs> so, in the aspect of your time and giving you content and methodologies that you can use and share and bring back to your organizations, I'm gonna to try to be very concise and to the point and give you a few awesome nuggets that you can take with you today and use forever. So, I'm gonna start off with a definition of the new CSR, which is environmental social governance and I'm going to use the word climate behind each so if you take the environmental climate if you take our society the societal climate and if you take our political climate in 20 25 years when the kids now who are grandbabies are growing up what kind of world do you think they'll be living in so this is the question that drives the need for change to leave a legacy when we're gone and so the one thing I wanted to start off with you guys talk about is the number one pattern that I've seen at all of the different organizations and events and conferences that I've been to over the last 20 years around this overarching subject of business as a force for good. So business with a conscience, conscious capitalism, it has very many names and I'm going to tell you what the pattern is right now and it's the number one pattern because I've asked some of the smartest people that I've seen speak on stage and who've attended all these events and a lot of their answers have boiled down to this one thing you should know first. And it's the difference between a stakeholder engagement and a shareholder engagement as a business format. So what this means is shareholder engagement means you base all of your decision making on what it takes to make the most money for the ownership group, whether it be publicly or privately traded. Stakeholder engagement still cares about helping the business grow and for it to achieve its goals, but it also includes employees, customers, the community, and the environment as additional stakeholders. So here are two documents that can help you understand this concept that will help you bridge the gap to taking your company from being a primarily money-minded corporation to a, a corporation of the community. One takes into account internal stakeholders, connected stakeholders and external stakeholders, which is good for the left brain logical people, but the one I actually enjoy a little better is a picture of a tree where the shareholders and the ownership group are the soil, the employees are the tree trunk, and then the branches and the leaves are all the other external stakeholders that we impact. Okay, so now let's put on the lens and figure out how we can use branded merchandise and promotional products with all the awesome sellers where you are at in Detroit today to figure out ways to gift to your internal stakeholders, which is your employees and your crew at your organizations that engage with all of your clients and external stakeholders, key clients, key donors, and the community and so forth. So what I want you to really think about as you're picking up, looking at products, looking at pictures, isn't just eco-friendly certifications or accreditations. I think they're great as indicators, but it doesn't tell the story quite like closing the loop like I'm going to explain to you. I have a magazine here, it's a PPAI or PPB uh, issue that lists a lot of amazing uh, certifications. Uh, B Corp is amazing, Fairtrade, FSC for paper. These are very helpful, but what I want to do is to show you how to do it differently in a way that's more impactful and believable. So what I would recommend, let's take an example of a product. You have a notebook made out of FSC certified sustainably forced paper that has wood veneer, but take that wood veneer and they're planting a tree instead. It's a net positive product. I think it's great. Let's use this as the example. So you gift this to your 100 key clients across the country, but you're not there to present it to them because you have a national organization. What I would implore you to do, again on FSC paper, is to print a collateral piece, either a wrap or a card that goes inside of it, linking your initiative to the gifting of the product. Okay, The important part is that you need to link who you say you are with what you're doing. Once you do that, the other part that I think is incredibly helpful is the use of pronouns. It's not me being the amazing gifter to you, the amazing client. It's we are doing this together. It's not the me and you language. It's the all of us. It's the second and third <clears throat> place pronouns. Me, we, all of us. We are doing this together. We need to work together to help the environment, to help the society, right? To help policy, ESG. 
environmental social governance to, to help all areas and we're going to do it together. Then the last part which I see very few people do really well and this is always the sniff test is I go onto people's websites and I will look at their about us page, their sustainability page, their equality, whatever it is you want to call it, page and see if they have any actual pictures of their team doing it. 90% of the websites I go on to just show stock art of a plant sprouting up from the soil or blue sky and they list their partners and that they don't even name. So this fails the sniff test like a fart in a car. It, it is so terrible. What you can do instead with this notebook is to take it one more step. Go to Home Depot, go to your local nursery, buy a couple trees, plant them at your school, plant them on your property, take pictures of your team doing it, take picture of your C-suite people doing it. What I always tell my team is leaders lead. People believe what they see that you actually do. If you can do all three of these steps, <clears throat> find the amazing product that has a cost, which the people there can show you a lot of the new ones, there's, there's great stuff coming out. Tie it with we language and then close the loop showing people online <clears throat> that you not only gift it, but that you live it. That's a place where the internal stakeholders want to go, a place where people you want to hire want to work, and a place where customers who have other choices in competitive markets where they'll want to buy from. There's something I think about all the time in learning theory, it's called Bloom's Taxonomy. It's something that teachers use, where you go from real memorization to understanding to true knowledge and application synthesis, which is being able to use it in various other situations. I hope that some part of this short time that we've had together has been incredibly useful for you and that you can enrich the lives of your internal stakeholders and your employees, building your teams, out hiring your competition, out selling your competition, while still being an awesome steward to the community at the same time. My name is Ray Del Murrow. Thank you so much.